Hello. This video will answer some questions about SDR pan adapters. Let's start. Many keep asking me how to find the point where to interface an SDR receiver to any radio receiver. What we want to do now is to show you how to find the place to interface our iFace buffer interface to your favorite transceiver. First of all, what we will do is take the radio service manual, and we will go and find out how the receiver is made. We will thus find the point where to connect the iFace input to our RTX. This I am showing you, remember, is a universal procedure, a procedure that is good for practically all radios, there are no distinctions. Let's start by finding the first RF mixer. Let's find the point where to take the intermediate frequency of any radio. In this case, it is a Yesu FT950. So, I repeat, let's take the service manual or, as Yesu calls it, the technical supplement, and let's look for the block diagram because first of all, we have to understand how our radio is made. Here we see the technical characteristics, such as the operating bands, the powers, and everything you want, but what interests us is to understand how the receiver is made. Here it is, it is a triple super heterodyne. The intermediate frequencies are 69,450 MHz, 450 kHz and 30 kHz. This is the information we will need, we will be interested in the first intermediate frequency, and then we will also understand why. But in any case, we are interested in the first one because it is the one that will allow us to have a broadband pan adapter. So let's go ahead, let's look in our service manual how our receiver is made. This job can be a bit long but with a little experience then you will do it very quickly. I generally start the search for the mixer from the antenna connector, then go back until I find my points of interest. This radio has two antenna connectors. So what we need to do is follow the path of the received signal which is this solid line, while this dashed one is for transmission, and let's go ahead, follow it and find an attenuator first. Then there is the band filter series, and this indicates that we are on the right path. A little further on we find the first mixer, the one that interests us. We have thus understood what we will have to look for in the wiring diagram, the Q1060. Well, now let's copy and paste this portion of the block diagram and indicate where we will take the signal. Now let's go to the wiring diagram and try to figure out what is after the mixer. So, look here, we have the reception chain with the various band filters. Here they are. Then there is the first mixer and then we see three different roofing filters, one of 15 kHz, one of 6 kHz and one of 3 kHz. We want a broadband signal, so we will take it before the three filters, in particular between the capacitor C1543 and the diode D1060, or the D1061 or the D1062. We are in the main unit, let's not forget it. So let's add a slide and the information we got now. We then need to find a power source for our iFace interface. Generally inside the radio there are several points where it is possible to take a 12 volt power supply or similar. Here there are 9 volts on connector J1005, at pin 14. This may be a good candidate. The same thing can be done from connector J1004, on pins 2 and 3. So these are all valid options. Let's not forget the ground signal. Let's put it all on another slide. Now that we have identified where to take the first intermediate frequency signal and the points from which to feed our iFace, let us remember that, in this case, this radio does not need to use the PTT signal to disable the buffer as the reception and transmission make different routes. 
We will therefore not have to provide the PTT to iFace. So, returning to our service model, let's look in the PCB where the points of our interest are located, that is, where we are going to take the intermediate frequency and the power supply. First of all, we identify the connectors J1005 and J1004. Here they are. So you can take the power supply here or here, the choice will be based on the ease of connection to the iFace board. Now let's try to understand where our mixer is, so we will have to identify component sign Q1060. To find the mixer, it is sometimes more convenient to look for the transformer that is close to it, in the sense that they are easily identifiable by their shape. We need the T1020. Here it is the T1020, so this is the transformer that stands at the output of the first mixer. So having found this transformer, it remains easy to find capacitor C1543 in the diodes. Here it is, so this is the transformer, this is our capacitor, these are the three diodes D1060, D1061, D1062. Therefore the point where to take the if signal is here, on this portion of the printed circuit, and it is also very very simple to do so. Let's do some more slides with the images where to take the signals. For the power supply, we will refer to connector J1005, so the 14th pin is the one where the capacitors are present, so we will have to take the power supply here, on these capacitors. Let's also remember that we should connect a ground, so we shouldn't forget about the ground signal. At this point the work is finished, we have identified in the wiring diagram everything we need and the relative points have been identified on the printed circuit of the main unit. Obviously in other radios the card concerned may have another name, it could be an RF unit or if unit, it depends on the radio and its service manual. In summary, we will have to connect the ground, the positive of the power supply, the intermediate frequency signal, and then the output of the external SDR receiver. Once everything is finished, we would tune our external SDR on the if frequency of the radio, and we will have the pan adapter. If we use the CAT interface it will be easier to tune the radio stations because on the screen we will have indicated the same frequency that appears on the radio display, the SDR software will automatically make the necessary conversions. So the work is very simple, it is the same for all radios, nothing changes, you simply have to take the service manual, find from the block diagram how the radio is made, find the sampling point for the output signal from the first mixer, then connect the iFace and start having fun. Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and an Instagram.